vehicle had to have come from its wheels to this sheet metal at least four times. So judging by the amount of damage on this, this was a high speed, severe rollover. The speeds involved in this crash are probably only in the 35 to 40 mile an hour range. The difference is, is that it's striking a very hard and heavy object that's absorbing little or no energy. Most of the energy in this crash is being absorbed by this particular vehicle. What's interesting about this is as the force is being applied this way, the unbelted occupants inside this vehicle are moving sideways up against the interior components, and you can see how it's bulged the actual passenger compartment out from loading as a result of not being belted inside the car. The damage on the steering wheel in this car will tell us quite a bit. This occupant was more than likely not belted, but basically the occupant has moved straight forward, loading the bottom side of the rim both upwards and forward. More than likely this occupant was killed instantly because of the fact that there's no blood inside the vehicle. Once the person's uh, killed instantly, they won't bleed anymore inside the vehicle. Well, in the United States, there are well over two million crashes a year, and we kill 40,000 people. Even though, as a society, we've somewhat accepted that risk, uh, we don't worry about car crashes the way we do about airplane crashes. We think of them as crashes, not accidents. There really are factors that cause these crashes, and more importantly, factors that cause injuries. So the importance for us of investigating crashes such as this is to try and prevent those crashes and to reduce or to eliminate the injuries that occur to the drivers and the occupants. If there's one place where they need the skills of a car crash detective, it's here. This is the most dangerous road in Europe. You're seven times more likely to lose your life here than on any road in Britain or America. The N125 stretches for 150 kilometers across the Algarve of southern Portugal, and every black spot on this map represents another cluster of lives lost this year. I think this road is famous here in Portugal. The 125, everybody knows it. <laughs> A friend of us, but he died because he was too speedy in this road, over there, in the crossroads. I think it was about 160 or 80. And there was this truck, this big, huge truck, which just crossed the road, and then he just crashed, crashed with, with, with the truck. Because he was too big, too long. Pedestrians are always at risk on the N125. Along with motorcyclists, they make up almost half the casualties on the road. Anyone trying to find the reason for this appalling death rate would hardly know where to begin. The Portuguese driver may be one factor. On paper, they have the worst accident record in the world. Portugal is a youthful nation and has more younger, inexperienced drivers than most, and it shows. They consider as the first cause of the accidents the behavior of the drivers, of course, of the other drivers. Generally, the people consider themselves an excellent driver and uh, each driver considers themselves an angel surrounded by a lot of devils causing them enormous problems. Driver behavior is clearly a factor. There are many others. One is the schizophrenic nature of the road itself. From being a modern four-lane highway, it suddenly plunges between the houses and market squares of ancient towns, only to re-emerge between open fields where the temptation to speed again puts pedestrians in mortal danger. It's the example of a road who, who should not exist. But the N125 exists as the feeder road to every beach on the Algarve. And that's another problem. In the summer months, the body count rises dramatically. In August, the population of the region increases from 400,000 to 2.5 million overnight as holidaymakers flood into the area. Business is brisk at the many car rental firms that stand beside the road as English, German and American tourists are bussed in from the airport. Few of them have a clue about the danger which lurks only feet away. 
little idea that the road they're about to join has an annual death rate of one person killed every 1,000 meters. Neither do they seem to notice the 30 or 40 freshly wrecked hire cars beside the building. Why should they? They're on holiday after all. It's the job of the transit brigade to police the traffic problems of the Algarve. In August, reinforcements are drafted in from as far away as Lisbon to help out their beleaguered colleagues on the road. Theirs is an exercise in futility, like trying to hold back the tide. Speed traps and random breath tests are employed around the clock. The accidents continue. Nothing is learned, nothing is gained. Continue, continue, sempre, sempre, sempre. Almost all the drivers are over the limit. They get a 40 pound fine. As dawn breaks, the transit brigade finds itself once again mopping up the debris. It's very bad. The N125 could be the ultimate real-life road crash laboratory. The trouble is that there are no research scientists around to study the data and draw the conclusions. In Portugal, there are no road crash detectives. This is the most familiar image of car crash testing. It's exciting, it's dramatic. But it has one serious flaw, say the investigators. It's not how accidents happen in the real world. When it comes to finding out why cars crash, there's no substitute for real life. In the detective's book, something like this is always called a crash, never an accident. It used to be an accident. These days, at least in the research community, it's most definitely a crash. If you assume it's an accident, we throw our hands up and we all go home because nothing can be done. But a crash is an event, and an event always has factors which lead to that event. Dennis, what do we got here? Well, we first thought it was a single vehicle versus fixed objects, but now uh, after we arrived on the scene, we found out that there was a second vehicle involved. We've got a minor side swipe, and then the victim careened off the right side of the roadway, took out four of those concrete uh, fence posts, and uh, wound up over in the field. Uh, he was airlifted uh, to Jack's extremely critical. He had some uh, concrete cinder blocks that came right through the windshield and hit him in the face. On the operating table is Andrew Goff, a middle-aged salesman from Miami. All that's known at this stage is that he's had a collision with another car, mounted the curb, and crashed. <laughs> 